Hi, my name is Dr. Udramon and through the Oral Hill channel today we are going to be talking about bilateral sagittal split osteotomy which is a part of orthognathic surgery. Let's start. So in the next few episodes I am going to be talking about orthognathic surgery. These are surgical procedures which are carried out to correct skeletal malocclusions. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about bilateral sagittal split osteotomy. As the word says, bilateral means both sides, sagittal is this plane, split means split and osteotomy means splitting of the bone. So this is usually done in cases of a retrognathic mandible or a prognathic mandible. In both cases, we do the BSSO. I am going to be talking about it like this only. BSSO that's the abbreviation and basically I'm going to be talking about why it is done. So for this we need to do a very thorough examination maybe even a cephalometric analysis for you know to check if the malocclusion is not just dental it is probably skeletal which means that your mandible is either too forwardly placed or it is too backwardly placed. This is a surgical procedure that requires a comprehensive team of orthodontists and oral surgeons and obviously it is an in-hospital and inpatient procedure that means you have to get admitted to the hospital and this procedure is actually carried out in general anesthesia. Now depending upon the advancement or the so-called you know setback of the mandible the procedure usually is almost the same till the end basically till the point you decide that it has to be either forwardly placed or setback. After achieving general anesthesia right, and doing a pre-workup about everything that is diabetes, any sort of medical problems, blood dyscreases, disorders. Once the pre-anesthesia workup is done and you are good to go, we basically after putting you under general anesthesia, we actually put local anesthesia all around in the area of the operation and we make sure that it is kept as sterile as possible. Now we place an incision right around your cheek, inside the cheek between the so called you know the uh, border of the the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible so the mandible basically has a ramus right and a body and this is the angle now we expose the ramus right and then we dissect away the soft tissues after we have dissected away the soft tissue under local anesthesia and general anesthesia we make sure that the ramus is exposed and then we start making the osteotomy cuts by exposing the medial side that is the side from the inside. We start with the lingual cut and then it continues as an S shaped cut on to the buccal side between the second and the first molar and from that point onwards once we do that we take uh, you know there is you have osteotomes these are chisel like instruments which are surgically used to split the so called uh, you know the ridge at that point of time. So what we do is basically we wedge the osteotome in the middle and we slightly put like a, with the chisel and the hammer right with very gentle taps it just keeps on diving into the bone. The cut is made with either a reciprocal saw or a burr that is basically a very you know special kind of burr that helps in finding out which is a calibrated burr the depth of the cuts right and once you've placed the osteotome you carefully split it and you expose the neurovascular bundle now this is done on both sides right so the neurovascular bundle needs to be preserved after the cut has been completely made and the split has been done the fragments become mobile now depending upon the case if there is a retruded mandible that means the mandible is shorter you do a slight sliding advancement and then you screw in with the plates so basically like a lift door, the modern lift that has one door that has a sliding door in itself like a collapsible door. You basically, if this is the length of the mandible, you slide it over and then now you screw it like that. So the mandible becomes forwardly placed. Pre-operatively the, you know, the uh, braces are already placed and there is a splint that is manufactured pre-operatively to set the occlusion because the occlusion sets the tone of the surgery. That's very important. So you do it on one side and then you do it on the other side as well and after that you establish the occlusion with the help of a splint. So you've done this, you've split the places, advanced it and you see with the splint that this is the relation that we actually want. Once this relationship has been stabilized and there is something known as a glenoid fossa in which the mandible, the lower jawbone houses, we have to establish that centric relationship in the 
operation theater itself that it is very nicely sliding in there is no you know any sort of displacement or anything and when one this once this uh, harmonious relationship with the help of a splint is established you screw in the plates this is for the advancement if you have a prognathic mandible you do the exact opposite thing instead of the sliding door thing you take a part and you cut a little bit part of the basically the bone and you put it like this very simply put so in in the advancement you did this that's the length and in the so called you know for example you did this and then you made it slightly shorter it's as simple as that you cut a segment and then you screw them together after this you put compression bandage around and the post and you do an intermaxillary fixation where you place arch wires so that the teeth are kept like that you're placed on for a few days you placed on iv fluids and so no foods at all we usually put dissolvable or resorbable sutures so that doesn't create much of problem and then you have uh, you do have a, you know disfiguring swelling to be very honest but the results when you talk about the results the results are amazing uh, there are obviously some possible risks that are present but the number risk versus benefit ratio is very much in favor of the benefits and obviously you will have to do your back end research about which clinician you are comfortable with and what their credentials are how many you know procedures they have done and what is their pre and post those things so bsso basically not only helps with mandible you know anterior posterior positioning it also helps in changing the if you have a facial asymmetry the cant right if you have a facial asymmetry that your jaw seems deviated towards one side that is also the whole complex can be used to make sure that you get a harmonious relationship not only functionally but aesthetically so that's it for today's video please like share subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates if you want to get in touch with me this is my whatsapp number and my social media handles kindly refrain from calling me directly as i might be busy with patients or otherwise just drop me a message and i can probably get back to you in a day or two and if you have any queries apprehensions suggestions criticisms or doubts please feel free to put them in the youtube comment section so that's it for today thank you